Chinese President Xi Jinping is in Central Asia for his first trip abroad since the coronavirus pandemic began. His first stop is Kazakhstan, but the highlight of his trip is expected later in neighbouring Uzbekistan. He will be there to attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation Summit, as will Russian President Vladimir Putin. They're scheduled to meet on the sidelines. Analysts are keen, keenly waiting for the outcome of their talks and what signals they will send given their ongoing tensions with the West. And Olivia Xiong joins us live now from Beijing for the very latest. Uh, Olivia, why exactly is Central Asia President Xi Jinping's first trip abroad since the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, the signal here really is that China is ready to get back to in-person uh, diplomacy at the highest level, with President Xi making his first overseas trip in more than two years uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic began. But also that China is keen to bolster ties with Central Asia, uh, given the tensions that it's facing with the U.S. and the West. Now, key here is that Mr. Xi will be attending that SEO's Leaders Summit uh, with Chinese state media saying that Mr. Xi's trip will help to uh, bolster cooperation between the member countries. Uh, analysts also are saying that this will cement what is seen uh, as the SEO being an organization that acts as a counterweight to Western-led organizations, especially as China has seen and viewed the U.S. as trying to shore up support among its allies to counter uh, China's rise. Also, uh, as we are expecting to see more countries gain membership to the SEO uh, at this meeting. Now, uh, China also no doubt has economic interest in Central Asia. We're talking about projects uh, in the region. In fact, it was in 2013 that President Xi himself announced this Belt and Road Initiative, which has been his brainchild. And the timing of this whole trip is significant as uh, China's foreign ministry has said that this is the most important event of head of state diplomacy on the eve of of a key Communist Party Congress that's to take place here in Beijing next month. And that's that twice a decade meeting. We are expecting to see President Xi uh, get an unprecedented third term in power as party leader, but also a major leadership reshuffle. And so analysts are saying that with Mr. Xi making this trip abroad at this particular time, it's a sign of his confidence in the domestic situation and his position here, but also an opportunity opportunity for him to show off his influence and leadership, given the pressure that China is facing in the international front. That's right. And um, on top of that, all eyes will be on the Chinese leader. He is expected to meet his Russian counterpart this week. What do you think is uh, President Xi looking to achieve from these talks? Well, observers will certainly be watching these talks very carefully, given what is happening. Uh, expectations are that, that uh, both countries will reaffirm their relationship and seek to uh, draw closer to each other, given the tensions that both countries are facing with the West. Now, the war in Ukraine is the backdrop of these talks. Russia uh, seeing setbacks back there. And the last meeting we know that uh, the two leaders had in person was back in February at the Beijing Winter Olympics back then. Uh, both sides had announced a no-limits partnership just days before uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, raising questions about what China knew, uh, even though uh, China has maintained that it takes a neutral position on this. Uh, China has refused to condemn Russia's actions and has spoken out against sanctions that have been placed on Moscow. Um, Ahead of Mr. Xi's trip, we had also seen China's third-ranking official, Li Zhanshu, make uh, a trip to Russia in which he said that he understands and supports uh, Russia's uh, the, the situation in Ukraine for Russia um, and also reiterated China's stance, uh, Russia's stance, rather, uh, that it was the U.S. that was causing the tensions and uh, you know, threatening uh, Russia's national security by expanding uh, near Russia's borders. And so we see that, you know, China has continued to walk this diplomatic tightrope in trying to maintain its relationship uh, with Russia, but also it has, it has been pleased that Russia has stood with it against the U.S., for example, over touchy issues like Taiwan, with Russia speaking out against uh, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's controversial visit to the South Rule Island. So certainly these talks will 
will be closely watched as to how President Xi will handle what will be one of his first most important face-to-face -face meetings with his Russian counterpart. Well, many thanks for that report. CNA's Olivia Xiong speaking to us live from Beijing. And now our correspondent Rosie Burchard is in Samarkand, Uzbekistan, where the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit is taking place, and she joins us live. Uh, Rosie, leaders set to hold their first in-person talk since 2019. As our correspondent just said, backdrop, what's happening in Ukraine. Now, the war in Ukraine likely to dominate these talks. Well, the city of Samarkand is gearing up to host these world leaders. There's a strict security situation going on. There are police all over the city. Public transport has been shut down and many roads have been closed. And that is because a series of world leaders, including Chinese President Xi Jinping, including Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Indian leader Narendra Modi, will all be descending on this city in the coming days. Now, you spoke there about Ukraine, whether or not that would dominate the agenda. Well, I think what we can say is that Russia would like to see some more support from these other leaders when it comes to its ongoing invasion of Ukraine. As Olivia mentioned, China has, for example, not condemned Russia, though it hasn't shown any sort of explicit support. And that's more or less the situation with a lot of these Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries, not least the Central Asian countries like Uzbekistan, which are somewhat caught in the middle here. Not only are they geographically right between Russia and China, they also have this potential fear that if Russia were to set its sights beyond Ukraine, one of these countries, for example, Kazakhstan, could be next. So these countries, look, many analysts saying, are trying not to annoy Russia, trying not to step out and condemn Russia or criticise it, but also not go as so far as to support Moscow. Now, there are other things on the agenda here. There will be lots of talk of regional cooperation, for example, on security. And we're also expecting leaders to discuss a hot topic, which is moving away from reliance on the US dollar and the euro. And of course, for Russia particularly, now subject to so many sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine, that is a key issue. And we've seen just in the last couple of weeks a big landmark deal between Russia and China to secure gas supplies from Moscow into China. And that was a concluded 50% in Chinese yuan, 50% in Russian rubles. So exactly a, an example of what they are trying to promote here within this bloc, a bloc which may be set to expand during this talks. And many saying that for Russia, this is really an opportunity to try and show that the West's attempts to isolate it over this invasion, over this ongoing war in Ukraine, have failed. Now, that's something which will, of course, be raising eyebrows with many Western leaders and allies around the world. But certainly Russian President Vladimir Putin trying to show here that he still has many friends around the world. Oh, thanks for that. Rosie Burchett in Samarkand, Uzbekistan.